me. Oh, man. Oh. That came out of nowhere. That was a good one, though. Oh, I got that lower back stretch. Oh, I got the other side. I'm waiting for my pop right now. Took my my I took my pulpa bear to the doctor. He's getting his 2020 LASIK done. Really happy for him. He needs it. I'm pretty lucky with my eyes. I haven't had any issues with them, thank God. Uh, good uh, grand afternoon, everyone. Grand morning. It's 10:10. Feels like half the day's over, to be honest with you. I think I just need to get warmed up again. Warmed up again. Uh, but we're going to be on um, Instagram Live today, uh, 5.30, 6 o'clock, in the studio at Sex Create with with Eric, who is a living legend, producer, father, community leader, nonprofit organizationer, organizer? <laughs> organizationer? Organizer. And anyway, we're going to be uh, doing some association uh, planning today. And um, anyway, it'll be at 5.30 or 6. If you guys just want to join in on the conversation, a couple of giggles. Um, yeah, that's about it. Oh, and I think I'm going to, I, I think I'm going to try to do TikTok uh, live at the same time. Just kind of two birds, one stone. You yeah, know? How you doing, Pastor? Grand uh, morning to you. Grand afternoon to everybody. There's a lot, of, well, a lot of wonderful faces. Faces. Instagram profile pictures that I see. And um, I hope everyone is shining bright. Like my forehead. Look at this thing. It is glistening over here. And it looks like I'm oily. Really just put some lotion on just a second ago. <laughs> for a little screen time. Um, but yes, the, the new year is coming right around the corner. So excited. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Man, I remember when it turned 2000. I was in 7th grade, going into 8th. My brother was a freshman in high school. My parents um, weren't home for some reason. Obviously... They thought the 2020, the world was going to explode. They're like, peace out, kids. <laughs> We're going to live our life. No, but they weren't home. And I remember my my brother threw a party. And he had all of his friends over. I think he had his girlfriend at the time. smoke I don't smoke now so I wasn't a cool kid um, um I like parties and stuff especially like seventh eighth grade I mean let's be honest I'm still way too young um I mean I, honestly I didn't I think start drinking booze at like parties until like junior senior year or something and I, and I was like yeah but anyway what was I going with that story I can't remember Oh yeah, my parents left, and I just remember the the ball dropped in two thousand, and I was in my room. That's what it was. I was in my room on my bed, and locked the door because I just didn't want it to be alone. If the world was going down, I was like in prayer mode. I was like super prayer mode. I was just like, Jesus, take the wheel, <laughs> uh, which is a good thing. And anyway, the ball dropped. We're still here. Twenty, about to be two years later. And, um, that's kind of like life, right? I really thought it was the end of the world. I mean, the way that the drama show, aka the, the news, you know, makes it all out, you know, <laughs> get all the toilet paper, grab all the water, grab your children. We got to go. Where are we going? I don't know. You know, they just keep this drama show going. <laughs> So that kind of just goes to show you. If you've gone through something that you thought was going to be the end of the world and you stayed in faith, the knowing.
That's gone now. You're in the logical. You're back on track. And yeah, good for you. Um, so anyway, it's not the end of the world. But that was my 2020 story for you guys. And, um, oh, that's not my dad. Um, about to be 2022. And, um, definitely shared some good New Year's with some good people. So I know that we're in the middle of a, you know, epidemic and this crisis is, it's, um, growing, I guess is the word. Maybe I'm, it's going to be smart to be back in my room on my knees praying for world healing, generational healing for Jesus to take the will to guide for our faith our higher power to guide us right? If that's the creator if that, and um, just praying definitely for that we all work in line meant with nature and you know being kinder being kind to ourselves I was not always the kindest person to myself uh, I thought determination was being hard on yourself it's not it's actually and as we go into 2022 I'm so grateful that my faith has just you know when they do that thing in like National Geographic where they're like, the Eiffel Tower. Now imagine you stack a five Eiffel Towers up. That's how deep it is. My Eiffel Towers are endless with faith over fear. Just endless. Um, and it's true. They're not inspired by you. They're intimidated by you. And uh, I just hope that you guys keep being inspiring people. Um, yeah, I've been sharing a lot more um, happy things around the world on my social media. I don't know if you guys noticed my profile thing kind of changed a bit, you know, and I finally just put, I'm a Renaissance man. That's for sure. Uh, artist by craft, um, profession, but I'm a, I'm really a protagonist and I love to travel and, and gain knowledge and culture and connect with human beings. I feel like the the closest point is from A to B, you know? And um, that's why I love you guys. And anyway, I see a whole bunch of questions. So before I ramble on anymore, let's, let's just get into some. Oh, so this is like, I can't wait for your fashion film in 2022 date. It's actually out right now. Just go on a uh, basic magazine. I think they have a basic magazine PR um, profile as well. And on their link, just go and click it. And they have their YouTube up. And I was able to, uh, you know, it was a privilege to work with uh, with um, Basic Magazine and, and be featured um, and to work as an actor in a magazine. That's, that's random, you know. Um, they had Malaga, who is an incredibly kind, smart, and talented young lady who's a supermodel. And she has like 4 million followers on, on and, and a wonderful management team. And she was just surrounded by a lot of love. And um, Victoria, the director, and everyone involved, the owner of Basic Magazine, um, were there. And just incredible team. Incredible team. So uh, anyway, the director called me. And she's like, are you available? And I said, you bitch, your bottom dollar. She's like, well, can I pay you bottom dollar? I was like, everyone wants to pay me bottom dollar. No, I know my value. And it's that amount. <laughs> but uh, we went in there and we had a blast. She just, it was very easy to work with. She knew what she wanted. And it was fun to play the villain. I got to be honest with you guys. <laughs> it's pretty fun. It's actually, I like to play the hero role. It's just not that much of a challenge for me, you know, to be that strong. My name is Gladiator. I am husband to a slain wife, a father to a slain son, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. Like to play that role for me, I can just get into that. But to the villain role, you know, created a little backstory on of why I was that villain. And it's because I had a lot of fear in me, a lot of toxicity in me, 
lot of ego in me, a lot of pride, a lot of sloth, a lot of wrath, a lot of gluttony in me. And uh, I created a little backstory behind that and a relationship with her and just let it freaking rip, yo. I don't know if you guys see it in there. I'm like, part of my language, I'm like, where the is the code? And they were like, no, 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 you know, get serious, like get go nuts, explode. And I just internalized it all. <laughs> you ever get so angry or you just have to laugh? Because you're about to go nuclear and that's kind of like your warning sign that you cracked. And then you crack. And that's what I did, so that was fun. Okay, moving forward. I've been in Mexico and to his home quite a few times and he is a nutball good man though good heart um, entrepreneur as well um, but yeah I would love to be in the next Avengers I actually had the privilege and pleasure and honor to work with Stan Lee on his last project before his passing which was called Panda vs. Alien it was a 3D animation film where I got to play one of the supporting lead characters um, named Gerald and his voice was like this oh Pandy Pandy I played a director cut cut that is beautiful Pandy now back to ones so it's kind of like a European kind of uh, UK big burly guy you know voice and uh, so anyway but yeah I'd love to be in Avengers I'd like to be in to more stuff like that and um, I'm about to be working with a brand new team and to be honest, my career hasn't even started, guys. Like, it's just been like this, slow trajectory up. And I have to say, I you know, again, as an ambitious, determined, disciplined, putting faith above fear and, and a loving person, um, it didn't feel too good to get all the no's. And I still get thousands of no's, you know. But... um what I got to say with that is now with my maturing, the emotions gone, remember that? And, and it's now we're into logic. I realize this. I've been going up and up and up and up and up slowly, but going up and up and up, which is pretty healthy. I think I've made it personally not as healthy by just kind of like, let's go and, you know, trying to push. The thing is you can't force anything. You just got to plan it. You got to put a budget behind it. I'm kind of rambling right now. But this is actually Jack Nicholson said this too. It's way better to go slow, slow, slow and steady and up. Slow and steady wins. And then catastrophe down, you know, um, and then catastrophe down. Uh, or like this. Can, 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 can. can you imagine if your life and your career was like that? That's like a heart attack. <sighs> so that's too much. But anyway, I would love to be in an Avenger film, and that was uh, very winded. Wonderful question, Cadejo. I'm sorry if I messed your name up. I probably just, just sliced that thing up. But let's talk about this. Did you watch Don't Look Up on Netflix? Yes, I did. Yes, I did, and I enjoyed it. So much fun. I thought it was innovative. I thought it was dramatic. I thought it was almost its own uh, genre. I felt like it was innovation. I felt like everyone did their part in acting it. And at the end of the day, it was pretty factual. That's uh, the world we're living in, guys. And um, it just is what we've created it to be. Um, wolves have definitely taken over a lot of the world. And they band together, fear-based. And they're preying on the sheep. And you hear, like, like um, so yes, I watched the movie. I enjoyed it. Shout out to Rob Morgan, dear friend of mine. And 
a dear, dear friend of mine, Rob Morgan. He played the scientist in there. He actually used to stay with me for a little bit and um, supported him when he was out in Sundance. Anyway, he's a family friend. He's um, a mentor, uh, a supporter, just a great human being. And he's gone through the gamut. And I got to tell you, you know, Rob, if you're listening right now, I love you. I'm so proud of you. And I've, I believe in you from the first second, like we connected, man. You have this residence about you that just shows in your eyes and your, in your face and your presence is, is, um, it's very, very, uh, has a lot of gravitas. Um, and I'm going to share a little bit of his story real quick. Okay. I want to share a little bit of Rob Morgan's story. Who's in the movie. Don't look up Adam McKay's film with Robert. I'm sorry with, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and the rest of the stellar cast. Right. So Rob wasn't, was, wasn't doing so well in work and he lived in New York, which is crazy expensive. Rob went from five years ago almost being like on the street, homeless, almost, to um, to getting that far in his career by make taking risks and believing in himself. Number one, doing films that his maybe his agents didn't agree with because they didn't make that much money, smaller indie film projects. But then those film projects that he fought to be a part of, that they were like, yo, you be a part of this, goodbye. This is about money. And if you ain't making money, then we ain't about that. So he's like, well, I'm gonna be, I'm an, I'm an artist and I wanna make this art. And it, it resonates his character with me. So he did those films. And I believe these agents even left him. Those are the films that went to Sundance and then became to be bigger films in Dallas Buyers Club, uh, Oscar nominated films that put him on the map so trust your gut, trust your intuition. You know, your team ain't always gonna resonate with you. Most of the team are just there to see you as a number. Well, Rob didn't see himself as a number. He saw himself as a human being that I that most people that I've worked with in Hollywood do not see you as a human being. They see you as purely as a number. And um, anyway, I'm just with that full circle. He's with the best cast in the world. Meryl Streep, Tyler Perry, Jennifer Lawrence, Robert, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, and my boy, my brother, Rob Morgan up there. Man, when I watch that stuff, I'm just like, woo! Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. And even when he was on Stranger Things, right? This is right around that same time when I met him. He was in Stranger Things. What's up, Elmar? I love you. Um, shout out. Oh, guy, I love you. Um, around that same time, that's, um, when he booked all that stuff. When the rest of the cast was getting like, I'm gonna say 5,000 an episode the first season, and then the second season they gave them all like 10 or 20,000. So just to this as well, you gotta know your value, and you gotta have people fighting for you. He didn't have anybody fighting for him, man. But he don't need to worry about that now, because those same agents or managers that were like, bye bye, Mr. Number, or we don't you know, believe in that, now they're probably blowing up his phone. Like, come on, blah, 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 blah. what do we have to do, man? What are we going to do, man? That's just the way it is. So with that being said, uh, my father just got here. We're going to get in the we're going to get in the car. We're going to keep moving forward. Have a plan. Uh, have that dream, have a plan, have a strategy, put some time into it, create a LLC out of it. Put some more time into it. Share it with people. Refine your plan. Refine your plan. You, if you will never succeed unless you fail. So fail, 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 fail. Learn, learn, learn. Grow, grow, grow. Invest in you, which is in me. Investment in me, and move forward. Love you guys. I'm out of here. I'm gonna now take care of my daddy. Oh, all right. So happy we're able to tap in for a little bit. And wonderful questions to everybody. God bless you and your family as we go into 2022. Yeah, yeah.